In this video, I'm going to show you how to graph a tangent function with a period change and a phase shift and a vertical shift. First of all, the period. I see that B value there in the front. That affects the period, so let's figure that out real quick. We know that the period is always the normal period divided by the B value. In the case of tangent and cotangent, remember that the regular period is pi as opposed to sine and cosine and secant and cosecant, those have a period of 2 pi. But tangent and cotangent, regular period is pi. So I'm going to be doing pi divided by b, which in this case is just pi divided by 2. So that'll be my period is pi over 2. There is a phase <coughs> shift as given by this h value. The sign will change, so the phase shift is at positive pi over 2. And there is a vertical shift given by this k value. No sign change there. This will be up 1. All right, we will deal with the asymptotes at the end, vertical asymptotes. Reflection, there's no reflection. There's no negative sign in the front, so I'll just say no next to that. <coughs> Anytime there's a phase shift, I like to begin at the phase shift. So that's what I'm going to do right now. All right, so here comes my uh, x-axis. All right, for tangent and cotangent, remember that we do two periods of these, one to the right and one to the left. Um, normally, I'd put 0 right in the middle, but <coughs> since there's a phase shift, I'm going to put pi over 2 right in the middle because of my phase shift. Now, I'm going to go four positions to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4. That should give me one period of this tangent function. I will also go four spaces to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4. That should give me an additional period of this tangent function. Now, I need to label all these. And uh, to do that, I'm going to ask myself, what is one quarter of a period? Because the way we use these markings, every position is always one quarter of a period higher than the previous position. So what is a quarter period in this case? Quarter period. Um, well, the period is pi over 2. So a quarter period should be 1 fourth of pi over 2, which equals pi over 8. So I should be able to add pi over 8 to this to, in order to get the next value. Oh, look, there was already an x-axis there. I did not realize that. Oh, well, I'm just going to use this x-axis. <laughs> um, so I'm going to add, I need to add pi over 8 to get the next value. But I need like denominators, of course. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this guy by 4. So what I really have then is 4 pi over 8. And I'm adding 1 pi over 8. So if I do that, I will have 5 pi over 8. All right? And I'll just keep doing it because it's so easy. So I've got 5 pi over 8, then I will have 6 pi over 8, adding again 7 pi over 8, and then 8 pi over 8. Going to the left, I'm subtracting 1 pi over 8 each time. So this would be 3 pi over 8, and 2 pi over 8, and 1 pi over 8, and 0. I guess I know where my y-axis is going to be, don't I? Okay, I've left myself space up here so that I could reduce. <coughs> okay, so now I'm going to go back and, and reduce all these values. Um, 5 pi over 8 does not reduce. But 6 pi over 8, that's 3 pi over 4. And then I've got 7 pi over 8. And this is just pi. Um, th 3 pi over 8 doesn't reduce. <coughs> and then this is pi over 4. 
and this is just pi over 8. Now this is 0. Because this is 0, I'm going to put the y-axis here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and erase this extra stuff now. I'll erase all this too. I'll even erase this extra x-axis. All right, so the y-axis goes right here because this is actually 0. You know what? I think I'm going to do this in green because the y-axis is special. All right, there's my y-axis. Um, now, I know there is a vertical shift of up 1. I, I think the a value is just 1. OK, so here I go. So this will be, I'll just mark this as 1. And then I'll mark this as 2. And then I think that's all I'm going to need, those, those two markings. So because of the vertical shift of up 1, I've got my brand new midline will be here. And I need to show that as a dotted line. But I'm also going to mark the A value above and below this. So the A value is 1. So I'm going to go up 1 from the midline. And I'm just going to put this yellow line because I, this is optional. I'm going to make it faint. So I made it yellow. If I will go down 1, that's the x-axis. So just understand that uh, I'm going to use the x-axis when I do my A value as well. OK, <coughs> so now I'm all set. Now, I've memorized that the way the tangent function works is it, um, if this is my midline, I've memorized that the tangent function begins and ends on the midline with the vertical <coughs> asymptote down the middle. So I'm going to be using that pattern that I've memorized. OK, so um, the middle, remember I started off with pi over 2, the phase shift. So it should start on the midline at the phase shift. So I should have a dot at pi over 2. And then it should end at the end of its period again on the midline. Same if I go to the left um, four places over to my, wait, one, two, three. Uh, I need to go all the way to the y-axis, don't I? OK, so my tangent should begin and end in these uh, places. And then right in the middle of each time, I should have a vertical asymptote. So I should have a vertical asymptote at pi over 4. And I should have a, another vertical asymptote at um, 3 pi over 4. OK, this is two periods of the function that's about to happen. Now the tangent function is a function that is always increasing. So I'm going to make sure that as I start with my first point that's over here on the y-axis, I'm going to increase. Now here comes my a value though. Halfway over, I should hit the a value line. So that yellow line I drew. So halfway over, I should hit that. Okay, so I'm increasing, but I'm going to make sure that I hit that point as I go. So there's that. And then starting from below, I'm going to be increasing until I get to this midline. But again, halfway over, I should be at the A value line, <coughs> um, this time below the midline. So you should have a point. If I were to check your answers, um, at 3 pi over 8, there should be a dot on the x-axis. So check your graph right now. Um, do you have a dot at 3 pi over 8 on the x-axis? Okay, if you do, then you're, you're on fire. You're smoking. Okay, so this is going to go like this. All right, and then I'm going to continue as I head towards the other asymptote. Again, at 5 pi over 8, there should be a dot at the A value line that I've drawn in yellow here. So I need to try to hit that point. And again, over here at uh, 7 pi over 8, everyone should have a dot on the y-axis. Uh, sorry, on the x-axis at 7 pi over 8. All right, just check it. All 
All right, so that's what everybody's graph should look like. I'm going to just pause for questions. All right, um, so for the vertical asymptotes, I'm just going to pick a vertical asymptote and then uh, go from there. Any vertical line always starts off x equals. So check your vertical asymptote. Some of you forgot to put x equals, all right? Identify yourselves and fix it and don't do that tomorrow. Um, my first vertical asymptote is here at pi over 4. I usually pick the first positive one. So I'm going to say x equals pi over 4. All right. And then I'm going to figure out how much would I have to add to get to the next vertical asymptote. Well, it turns out I have to go a full period before I get to another asymptote. I'm counting the spaces, one, two, three, four. If I go four whole spaces, that's a full period. If, I have, if it's ever two spaces, then I know that's a half period. So I have to go a full period, and uh, the period is pi over two. So that means I'm going to add pi over two to get to the next asymptote. Now if I put a, an n on here as a multiplier, then that will give me the next asymptote, and the next asymptote, and the next asymptote. As long as I identify that n as an integer, that will automatically give me all of the asymptotes going to the left and to the right forever. And that's it for problem number three.